Welcome to another episode of OpenNMS 101. My name is Taurus Baylog. I'm one of the maintainers of the OpenNMS project. And in this lesson, we're going to get started with events. Now, OpenNMS is event-driven. Events are the heart of OpenNMS. Um, we have processes in OpenNMS uh, called daemons. And they're like little helpers. They're not like uh, necessarily like the uh, you know satanic devil pitchfork kind of demons. They're instead demons EA or AE, which means um, kind of like a helper. And so processes are called demons, and the key process is called event D. And it's a publish and subscribe bus, which basically means that processes can send events to event D, and event uh, processes can subscribe to events in event D that says, hey, when this type of event shows up, please send it to me. Now, we have a, a, a well-known port called 5817. It's a registered port is uh, where event D listens for events. And it's basically you make a connection to port 5817 and you spill some XML. And if the XML is formatted properly, an event is added to OpenMS. Uh, the daemon config is, is a file called eventdconfiguration.xml. And uh, the events themselves are indexed in a file called eventconf.xml. Now, events in OpenNMS, we needed some way to identify an actual event. And so we use a string called a UEI for Unique Event Identifier. Uh, and so when we get events, if we generate them internally, we will assign a UEI. If we get external events, such as a syslog message or an SNMP trap, we're going to need to assign a UEI. And we've uh, included a useful little script called sendevent.pl. Uh, in order to help you send events from the command line. Um, there's, a, I think, a Java version of it, and it's pretty easy to, to write in other languages. But we're old school, so it's written in Perl. Now, the event D configuration file, all configuration files, well, most configuration files, are found in the OpenNMS Etsy directory, which in uh, the case of uh, an RPM-based distro is going to be opt OpenNMS etc. In the case of a Debian-based distro, it becomes user share OpenNMS etc, which is a sim link to etc slash OpenNMS. Now, this is the first um, XML file we've actually looked at. Um, this weird tag here, this this uh, question mark uh, tag, is just an XML tag. It's a mar it's it's a special tag for the markup language. Uh, but here is the first real um, piece of information. We see we have this tag called event D configuration, and this is a common theme within OpenMS configuration files. The very first tag will have uh, the name of the file in it. And then it has this ton of attributes. We have this uh, attribute XML and namespace, TCP address, UDP address, receivers, etc. Now, there is no information. When I talked about in the last lesson markup languages, usually you have a tag, like with HTML, you have an HTML tag, you have a bunch of stuff, and then you have a slash HTML tag. If everything is just one line, like there's actually nothing going to exist between the tags, everything's in attributes, you can shorten this with a slash here. And so you can see there's a backslash here. If I jump over to um, my virtual machine and I actually look at event D configuration.xml, uh, you'll see this actually broken out differently. So there is actually a slash here. I could shorten this by just doing this. And that would, uh, would be syntactically the same. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to quit out of here. Now, the only thing you really need to get out of this particular file is this TCP and UDP address. By default, OpenNMS will only listen to events from localhost. Uh, you don't want people sending events into OpenNMS uh, that you don't want. And so uh, we don't open, we don't listen uh, we don't allow communication to this port with the exception of localhost. Now, as we're going to see, it's very, very uh, nice to be able to send events from remote systems into OpenNMS. And in that case, you would change this 127.0.0.1 to an asterisk. Again, getting back to my file here, I would just go in here and do something like this. Change that to an asterisk change that to an asterisk, and I'm done. Those are the only two values you can actually have 
um, in this file. You can either have an asterisk, which means all interfaces, and you can have 127.0.0.1, which means localhost. Um, you may be asking yourself, well, why can't I put in a string of IP addresses, etc.? Well, OpenMS is pretty broad as it is, and so we basically say, use your firewall. If you need to limit who gets to access that port, use whatever firewall comes with your distribution and um, either turn on or turn off localhost or all. Um, now, so we also have, so let's talk about that. So let me jump back here. So I mentioned that there was this send event script, send event.pl, and I'm just going to type a UEI, UEI.foobar. What the heck, UEI.foobar. Now, if I jump back to my web UI, I can now go to status events and click on all events, and there, I have an event. I just sent an event into OpenMS. Now, it's uh, UEI is called UEI at Fubar, and we haven't configured anything for this event, uh, but there, boom, I had it. I love this aspect. Um, you know, we, we envision OpenNMS to be a single pane of glass, or as some of my friends say, a single glass of pain. But, um, so if you've got scripts or anything that runs that generate events, why don't you send the important ones into OpenNMS? Um, this will give you the ability to, to send these things in. I was, we have a large number of customers who are um, private equity firms. I won't name any names because you've probably never heard of them, but a private equity firm is when a bunch of rich guys find a bunch of smart young guys who want to be rich guys and say, hey, here's money, go write computer programs and trade on the markets and make money for me and you get to keep some of it. So their internal applications are, are kind of the crown jewels. I mean, they're very, very secure. They don't share the information because that's what's giving them a competitive advantage. Well, how do you monitor those things? Um, well, I showed this to, to one guy, and within 20 minutes, he had modified their application, which was written in C, to actually send events into their instance of OpenNMS. Basically, you connect to a port, spill some XML. He basically took the send event uh, Perl script I, I, that, that I showed you, converted that to C, plugged it into his application, and bam. He had instrumented his events, took 20 minutes. Um, so it's a really, really cool feature of OpenNMS, this ability to send events in. Now the problem is UEI.foo, foobar, isn't very useful in and of itself. So what we want to do is configure those events in order to, uh, to make them more usable. We want to put them in English. Um, EventConf is how we do this. Now eventconf.xml, this configuration file has two main purposes. First of all, there are global security settings. And second of all, there are a list of included files that contain our event definitions. Um, I am going to, let me see this. I'm going to jump back, because I can. Let me jump back to, the, to my uh, terminal window, and I'm going to edit eventconf.xml. So the global security settings is this section right here. Again, notice that we're, in, we're using XML, so the very first tag is an events tag. If I drop to the bottom of the file, you'll see that there's a slash events tag. Um, and there's a ton of stuff in the middle here. The global security section here is for, um, events can be very powerful. I mean, you can, you can generate actions, you can print log messages, you can generate scripts, you can open trouble tickets. And the idea is, do you want an external event? that comes from who knows where, to be able to do those things. And by default, we set um, it to no. In the fact that, so when I define my event, if I have a script uh, uh, attribute, if I have a trouble ticketing section, if I have an auto action, those will work from the configuration file. But if I add those to the XML that I send in from my external event, it will not work. I don't know why log message is here. I guess this is, the log message is what you see in the browser. So when I actually click over to the browser, the log message here is an event with no matching configuration it was received from interface blank. Um, I'm wondering if the, uh, the, the original authors were thinking, well, someone could put obscenities or things like that in, the, in, the, uh, in the, the event itself that they send in. If you want to be able to override the log message, you can easily just remove this um, and it's good to go. Uh, this, this whole thing came about uh, uh, I remember I was working with a tool called um, Micromuse Netcool, and Micromuse Netcool had the ability to do a, a remote um, 
uh, program execution. So I could basically connect to a, a daemon that was running on a, a server and, and execute commands. And I was working with my friend David, who's the president of the OpenMS group, and uh, we were, he sits there and looked at me and says, well, what's to prevent anyone from executing code? And I was like, oh, well, you'd have to be an admin user, blah, 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 you can't do this. And he says, yeah, but what if I'm an admin user here? And he pointed to his laptop where he had an instance of Netcool running. And I said, uh, let's find out. So I poked around on the internet and I found there was a website, uh, it was called ism.netcool.com, that had a port open that was for this, this, uh, this server, this, this, uh, this remote uh, uh, piece of code. And uh, so I quickly coded up an event and I said, hey, I want to send an event that generates an action that says, give me a root shell on that system. And sure enough, I generated the event, boom, I had a root shell on that system. Um, so you want to be kind of careful about anything that can generate ex uh, uh, commands that you limit that. And that's what the purpose of this section is for. Now everything else here are these include files. I wrote very, very little of the OpenMS code, but this is mine. I actually, is, and, and I will brag about the features that I wrote since they're, they're, uh, they, they help enliven my otherwise dreary existence. So. Um, Originally, back in OpenMS 1.0, this file contained all the events. It was huge. It was like two, three uh, megabytes of text. I forget how many thousands upon thousands of events we predefine. I think it's close to 20. We'll find out in, a, in, a, in, the, next, uh, in the next module when we talk about notifications. But um, you know, having to manage that and changes in those files was a pain. And so I said, there's got to be a better way. So I, I used my very limited Java skills to create this, this setup where basically you can include events. Now, the order in which the events are listed here does matter. Because basically when an unknown event comes in, it's going to look through uh, here for a match. The first match will win. So as I said, we look through open OpenMS events. And then we look for all these different uh, other events. Starting right here is all of our different vendors. We have 3Com, we have Cisco, we have Alcatel, etc. At the very, very bottom, you will see we have a file called default events. This event here, an event with no matching configuration was received from the interface, that's included here. So basically, if it gets through all of these event configurations and it hits here, the very last event is going to be the event that my UEI.foobar Thing generated. Uh, so you never want to, I have, I have a little bit of OCD, I work with people who are OCD, and we've had people reorder this list of event files um, so that the default events occurred um, alphabetically. Don't do that. So I always put my events at the top and leave everything else standard. Now this is what an OpenNMS event looks like. This event is called a new suspect event. And this is the event that gets generated when OpenNMS has found an IP address that should be scanned for services. And so as you can see, we've got our, our UEI, whoops, sorry, we've got our UEI.OpenNMS.org slash internal slash discovery slash new suspect. That is the unique event identifier. That is a string. Um, it looks kind of like a URL. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's just a way of organizing using these slashes. Or this is an internal OpenNMS event in the discovery section called new suspect. We often just refer to an event by its last little bit here. So this would be a new suspect event. There's a label um, tag here that uh, says this is an OpenMS defined internal event, discovery new suspect. Event labels show up in the GUI. Uh, I don't think they're really used anywhere else. So you can put stuff here. I, I do tend to try and put a vendor name or whatever first so that they sort nicely. So all the OpenMS defined events have an event label starting with OpenMS defined so that they sort nicely. Now here we have this description interface blah has been discovered and is being queued for a services scan. Um, now this isn't, uh, uh, this, um, I put this in here to kind of show um, uh, what's going on as far as uh, the, it, this is embedded HTML. So this is a paragraph tag. It's actually embedded HTML. The actual file is different. So let me jump back over here and show you. If I edit events, open an MS events, and I find my new suspect event, you'll see, let me add some space here so that we can clean this up. So you can see, oh, excuse me, let me 
you can see, um, we can't embed HTML natively in XML because XML doesn't know the difference. So it doesn't know I'm embedding uh, HTML. Um, so I have to use what are called HTML entities. And so this little ampersand, two characters, LT, um, semicolon, that's a less than sign. This uh, ampersand GT semicolon is a greater than sign. So there are a number of entities I cannot use within XML files. I can't use less than signs, I can't use greater than signs, and I can't use the ampersand itself. And that's actually represented with a, um, let me go here, I'll just, that's represented as ampersand AMP semicolon. As you notice, as I type that, Vim is smart enough to do syntax checking. So, um, that gets set up and it lets me know that that is invalid, turns nice and red, but that is a valid thing. Now, it doesn't mean that it'll, it'll actually parse, um, the XML will parse, but at least syntactically, it'll be, it'll pass a sanity check. Now, why would you want to put um, HTML in your descriptions? Well, you can embed links. In the example we're going to use, we're going to embed a link in here. So when this event shows up, we'll actually have a link that we can click on. And that can enable your operators to go through and do things. Um, now, you'll see these percent signs here, like this percent interface. This is an event substitution. So OpenNMS allows you to take information and, and put it for each particular event. So when this event, new suspect event, will have an IP address associated with it. And so that gets put into the interface field. So this will actually read interface 10.1.1.1 has been discovered and is being queued for a services scan. Um, there is a, a table here that shows you, um, there's a wiki entry that shows you all of these. But here's some, um, you know, that you can put the UEI, you can put the source, you can put the time it happened, you can put information from SNMP, you can put in an operator instruction field. And the big thing that we use is you can do parameters. So you can do different parameters in here because usually events get sent with parameters and you can extract them and display them in your event choices. And then finally, we have this log message destination here. So the log, there's, there's several of them. Log in display says display the event in the GUI and log it to the database. Now there's some events that you don't really, that, that are basically internal to OpenNMS that, that you don't want to put into, in front of operators. You should only put an event in front of an operator if it matters to them. So we have the ability to do an event that says log only, which says process the event, log it to the database, but don't display it in the GUI. We also have this do not persist. That's basically process the event, but don't display it or log it. Uh, and that's, that's used sparingly. And then finally, we have uh, a special log uh, destination just for SNMP traps. This is discard traps. This came up, we had a, a customer in Chicago um, that turned on uh, SNMP traps on their Cisco, on their border router, which is Cisco router, and they set it to debug level. So it flooded OpenNMS with a ton of traps. And we were like, hey, you know, we, Event D was struggling to process all of these traps, so we said, okay, I'm, for these particular debug level events, I'm going to set the log uh, destination to be discard traps. It says, throw them away. And so that's what we do. We throw them away. Now, this is kind of one of my favorite pieces. The last thing, going back to our event here, is the severity. Now, severity is in OpenMS. Severity is anywhere. We call it the Christmas tree effect. When I go to a customer site that's just getting started with network management, chances are all the events that they've configured are going to be either red or green, you know, critical or normal. And, um, and it, it's kind of frustrating because we have all these different levels of uh, severities. Uh, and when you make everything critical, it kind of um, weakens the impact of an actual critical event. It kind of reminds me, there's, there's a movie called... Uh, um, uh, this is Spinal Tap. I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, and there's a scene where um, Rob Reiner, who's the reporter, is interviewing one of the, the band members in this fictional heavy metal rock band. And he goes, he goes, you know, why do you think you're so popular? And he goes, oh, it's the amplifiers. Excuse me? It's all amplifiers. Most amplifiers just go up to 10, but our amplifier goes to 11. 
and they cut to a scene where the, the knob on the amplifier goes to 11. And Rob Reiner asks, he goes, well, why don't you just make it go to, to 10 and just make 10 louder? But, but, but all this goes to 11. And that's the thing. It's like a lot of people get tied up with this word critical. So I, um, I basically say, instead of looking at the word critical or major or minor warning, think about how you react to that particular uh, alarm. So a critical event to me means that numerous devices on the network are down. If you only had one DNS server and the DNS server went down, that would impact your entire network. Um, so that would be a critical event. And everyone who can help should stop what they're doing immediately and fix the problem. Um, a major event is some part of a system's down. It could be the system itself is down. It could be um, a, a, a power supply is down in a redundant power supply system. It could be a service is down. Uh, so so it, the, the device is completely down. Someone needs to basically do something immediately. So this is down. This is important. This is major. A minor event means a part of a device, say a service or an interface, and in this case a power supply, has stopped functioning. It needs attention, but it may not need attention immediately. So if I'm at lunch and I get a minor event on my phone, I can say, oh, I'm going to finish lunch. If I get a major or critical event, I might need to do something immediately. Now, a warning event is something that may require attention. So this might be um, I get a login failure message. You know, uh, and I can look at the message and say, oh, it's Zeke. Zeke always fat fingers his, uh, um, his password, so I can ignore that. But it may be someone trying to break into my system, and I might need to do something about it. So, um, and then, um, so these are the, the four I came up with. You can come up with your own. This is open source. You know, feel free to come up with your own uh, mapping for what is a critical event, what is a major, and what is a minor. But do not, I would stress, don't make everything critical. You know, if you have a bunch of stuff that's critical, make it minor, and just like on that knob, you know, just make ten louder. So treat it, you know, treat the minors as you would criticals, and then it gives you a little headroom to actually um, escalate the severities on those events that are really important. There's a couple other severities. Indeterminate means we don't know. Um, this is the default severity for traps. Uh, SMP traps do not have a built-in severity field, and so we may not know what the severity is. Um, a normal event is an informational message. It's usually the equivalent of an up event. So, hey, I was down, now I'm up. That's a normal event. You don't need to do anything. So no actions required. And then we have a special severity called cleared. It's used in automations, which we'll talk about in, uh, uh, in the fifth module, in the fifth lesson, um, which is a way of alarms clearing out the severities of things that are no longer a problem. So if you have a critical event, you fix it, you get a normal up event, and then the, the system can clear the critical event so you don't see it anymore. So sending events. So here I did my uh, send event PL UEI.foo. Uh, there are tons of options. So let me go back, get out of here. So send event.pl, if I do it without any, um, any attributes, you'll see that I can add um, you know, time zone service, node ID interface. I can add all these different stuff. I can reference parameters. I can set the severity. We just talked about severity. One is indeterminate, two is cleared, three is normal, four is warning, etc. So if I do my, uh, I did my send event, um, if I do send event UEI at foo, I can actually do one where I set using dash X, I can set it and make it a critical event. And so if I go back to my GUI, as you can see, here was the FUBAR event that I sent uh, a while ago, a couple of minutes ago. Wow, about 20 minutes ago. And now we have this indeterminate event, and then I set it as a critical event here. I overrode the default severity in the file and made it critical. So, um, so we are going to, um, oops, we are going to create an event. So we are going to create an event called the class slash happiness event. 
Um, I used to do this with beer. Um, so it was all about being out of beer and being unhappy and happy because I had beer. And then I taught the course in the Middle East. And of course, the social norms there frown upon alcohol. So instead, we are going to uh, use uh, happiness and unhappiness and things like that for our events. So um, I'm going to go and send this event. So I'll go back to my, my browser here. And so I'm going to say send event ubi.openms.org slash class slash happiness. So I sent my event. Let's look at it in the GUI. So go over here and refresh our events. And as you can see, I can click on number 36 here, which is my event. And you can see here's the UEI, here's the log message. We don't have a configuration for the event. So our next step will be to create this configuration. We're going to create an event definition. We're going to add it to the eventconf.xml file. We're going to reload the configuration, send the event again, and see how that changes, how it appears in the GUI. So there's our unhappiness event. So what we're going to do is, um, and forget these, uh, these, these URLs right now, um, we're going to go and um, create an event file. And this is what it's going to look like. So here's our class events.xml file. Event files contain events. So the first tag is going to say events. And the last bottom is going to have a slash event. And then we're going to have a bunch of events. I can have, this only has one, but I could have a ton of different events here. Um, now, I need to match my UEI, and it is exact match. So I typed in ueiopenms.org slash class slash happiness, all lowercase. So I've got to have my events match here. Um, I've got my event label, and then I have my description. This uses those HTML entities, so it's a paragraph that says this event is sent when the OpenMS class is happy, closing paragraph tag, and then it's a little un, uh, um, unordered list that has this thing, dance, everybody dance, life is good, this is fun. You get extra credit if you can uh, tell the very obscure YouTube video where these lines come from. But anyway, it's a happy thing. And then the, 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 the message is OpenMS class is happy. Of course, we assume this is a normal message. We don't need to do anything because the class is happy. Now, what you could do right now is you could create this file and go ahead and um, add it to OpenMS. But when we teach this class here, um, we used to do that. And people would sit here and they'd type. Um, a lot of people might be new to editing with something like Vim or they're uncomfortable and they would have typos and it would just take a lot from the class. So what I'm going to do is I put up all of this stuff on the web. So I don't know if you noticed, but on the uh, introductory slide for every one of these lessons, we have www.openness.org slash capital T training. And if you go to capital T training, you will see this list here of configurations. So we've got config, we've got slides, we've got videos, etc. Now I'm going to click on the config directory and we're in exercise three. So I'll click on exercise three and look, there's the class events.xml file. So you do not have to um, you do not have to type it in. Now what a lot of people in my class will do, they'll click on it and they'll bring it up and there's the file, just like I showed you on the on the screen, and they'll go, oh I'm going to copy that. And I want to paste it. That's a bad idea because most browsers add these little dashes. They add this little extra formatting, which is not valid XML. If you really want to copy and paste it, you can right mouse click and say um, uh, view source. I want to view the source. Oh, click on this and then say view source. So if I look at the source, that actually has exactly what was on my slide. But if you have access to the internet on your system, there's a much easier way to do it. You just right mouse click on this file, copy the link location, and then go to your shell, and then you can use a command called wget to do it. Now notice mine, I don't have wget installed, so I'm gonna yum install wget. Take a second. You can also use curl. Uh, I'm more familiar with wget than I am with curl, so I like to use wget. Now, all event files, uh, by tradition, are stored in the subdirectory under events called events. And there's all of our event files. So I'm going to do a wget, and I'm going to paste in that URL. Now I'm going to add an option just out of habit called dash n, dash capital N. 
this is the first time we're going to go out and get the class events file. So I don't have to, um, I don't have to worry about any changes. But in future exercises, we're going to update this file. We're going to add events to our class.events file. So what I want to be able to do is um, overwrite it. I don't want it uh, to, to preserve the existing class events file. And that's what the dash capital N will do. So if I were to download it again, I would get, it would just have the one class.events.xml file. If I left that off, I would end up with a class events.xml.1, .2, file, and then I have to manually copy them back over. Now, that's step one. So if we look now, if I cat the class events file, you can see there is all the text for our event. Now I have to turn it on. So I'm gonna go up one level. So let me uh, go up to the Etsy directory and I'm going to edit eventconf.xml. And here is all of our event files. Now what you can do is, if, if to, to clean up the GUI, it doesn't really do much performance wise, but if you wanna clean up the GUI, if you don't have any AKCP event uh, devices or APC devices or Aruba devices, you can get rid of these, but what I would suggest you do is you comment them out. Uh, we're going to talk about upgrading later, but when you upgrade, you have to merge any changes in your XML files with the XML files that get distributed with OpenNMS. So what you want to make sure that you do is keep those as similar as possible, and it'll make um, uh, merging them easier. So I am going to steal this line here, and I'm going to put in class. So class.events.xml. So I now have my events uh, set up in, um, in the event comp file. So now I'm going to quit out here, save that. So there's one last thing I need to do. So I've got my class events file. I've stuck it in, um, I've stuck it in the, um, the proper directory. Uh, now I just need to tell event D that it's changed. With the latest versions of OpenNMS, we have become pretty good about the ability to reload various daemons within OpenNMS without having to restart. We used to have to restart. And the problem is if you're on a um, production system, you might be using it. You may say, hey, I don't want to restart. Now I will stress, OpenNMS is free. I will strongly say, take OpenNMS, um, if you're running it in production, set up a VM somewhere where you do all your configuration changes, test them on the VM, then stick them in production. Not only will that keep the log messages to a minimum so that you can um, you know, see if you run into any problems, it won't impact your production system as much as if you play around with it. Now, I, I do that. I do play around with, uh, with my production system, but my production system is small and it's not critical. Anyway, this says, okay, we're going to send another event. Again, OpenNMS, one of the things that makes OpenNMS Enterprise great is this great event bus. I want to just send an event into event D that says, hey, reload the config. And there's going to be a process that listens that says, oh, I got this event. I need to restart, uh, reload the config into event D. So let me go to here. Let me see if I can remember all this. So send event.pl. And it's uei.openms.org slash internal slash re, I think it's lowercase, reload daemon config dash p for a parameter. And I'm going to put in the daemon name is event d. I mean, I don't think I did that right, so let's make sure. Demon name is camel case, reload demon config is proper. Now, um, you want to be careful when you do this. Another reason for using a um, development system where you test all your configurations is that um, if you make a mistake here, uh, it may not recover gracefully because you could possibly kill event D, which means that when you try to send another event in to correct your problem, it doesn't work. So let me send my event in and go, because it's an event, I can go to my event page and I can look for it. So I did everything right, because here's the event I sent in, ueid.openos.org reload daemon config, and I got a reload daemon config successful event, which means there were no errors. Again, lots and lots of events in OpenMS that um, can, can give you like a little sanity check 
on what's going on. And now I'm going to go back here, and then I'm going to send in my happiness event. I'm using the up arrow on my keyboard. I strongly recommend when you're doing this that you learn two things, how to search through your history and how to do tab completion, because that's what I'm going to do. So anyway, let's send this event in, go back to our setup, hit refresh. And now I have a lovely green OpenMS Classes Happy Event. So here was the, down here is the happiness event that didn't work, and here is the OpenMS Classes Happy Event. And so I managed to create an event. And so I've been talking a lot, so I'm going to end this with one last note. Uh, in, a, in a previous uh, lesson, I talked about a command, um, and it's opt openMS bin openMS dash v status. If you run this this status command, it'll go in and it'll talk about all, it'll check the status of all the running demons. And as you can see, there's an event D daemon, a trap daemon, a Q daemon, a script daemon, polar daemon, etc. That's how I knew to use capital E event D here and not a lowercase e. Um, this name here has to match exactly this name if I want to use the reload daemon config um, command. Anyway, have fun with this. Um, set the severities, add new events. Uh, if you have backup systems or anything right now running that can generate events, have them send them into OpenNMS and you can start getting use out of OpenNMS immediately. In the next module we're going to talk about notifications, which is basically, okay, I have some events and now I want someone to tell me about them. And one of the ways you can do that is through notifications. So I'm going to go ahead here. Stop. See you next time. Um, thanks again and I hope you're finding these useful.